to round four of the 125 World GP Series. We move to Schwannenstadt in Austria. A great day's racing ahead in the sunshine. But before the racing, we spoke to a dejected Bob Moore about his injuries. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it one more chance. I have uh, now the doctors was coming from Italy, and we're going to make uh, some injections for the pain and to see if I can ride. I'll ride the second practice. I already tried the first practice, and it's... Uh, was uh, not good. So yeah, it's kind of strange. It's it's all the, all the muscles on the top of my arm uh, from the stress of the break is what the problem is. It's not so much the bone that is hurting me. It's all the muscles that I don't have any strength. So yeah, it's really disappointing because I just come up to form and I you know win a Grand Prix and now I have to start from zero again. So no, I I you know I'm still in good spirits. I hope everything goes well for the for this injection and so I can ride this race and uh, get some points. Well, with the medical repairs done, it was Bob Moore down to the start area for him to go out and practice and see what he can do. But after a couple of laps that wasn't to be, Bob Moore signaled that it was time for him to pack and head home as it was for Paul Malin. Paul went out and practiced, a terrible back injury. It was time for him to pack up and head for the airport as well. Not a good start to the uh, season for Paul Mayland and a very dejected Paul will leave the track side. Looking a lot more positive, Mr. Puzar, he's down to the line and they know two of the favourites have gone home. They're on the line preparing everything. Quick last look at the circuit and it will be time for the 15 second board to go up and the commencement of each one. Eyes down, look in. This is where the adrenaline starts to move. All the pitching, the bobbing, and the weaving. The gate will drop. Away they go. Pushing. Take that give an inch. They've got a right hander. They've got very, very slippery cross there. They'll go up the hill. Full bike get through the first turn. After that, we don't know the man that comes out first on the Kawasaki. The Pasqui has gone to the front. Alessandro Pizarro is going to second. The man that will certainly take them all the way around the circuit is Chiyomi. He's gone to the third already. But it's the Kawasaki in front of the upper half. The rider has gone down. He's going to get locked down with that as well. And he got caught up in that. He got going very, very quickly indeed, though. Still the Pasqui on the Kawasaki up front. He has then got Pizar behind him. He's on the CM. And then Federici on the Husqvarna. Of course, the big flying Yamaha and Chiyomi were wanting him in there as well. Uh, Yamaha being really incredibly dominant in one of the this year. And has all the top three uh, Italian riders. They really been very, very impressive. But right now, they've got to Pasqua doing a great job for Kawasaki. But he's going to have his work cut out today. Look at this magnificent country setting through the trees they come. So, Pizarro is on the front. The Pasqua goes back to second. But that's the man that they all fear. Chiodi on the Yamaha, number one, two, one. Incredibly smooth rider. He will now pick up the chase uh, on the Alessandro Pizarro. Chiodi now on his way. He's on a mission. He's going to get a move on. He's going to reach you now. He's got pressure. And there's 72 chase. Stop comes into the picture. Is it that good for Suzuki? Very, very strong and a very popular rider. James John doing a good, good job. He's flying the flag for Suzuki worldwide. Pizarro quite capable of riding with the best in the world. Chiodi on the Yamaha. The Italians have just been unbeatable on 1-3-5. They've had some great rides between the three of them. Jamie Drop now quite happy to mix with the best that there are. So Drop gets up onto the tail of the Pasquia. So he's mixing it in very, very heavy company there as well. But of course, Pizarro behind him now is Chiodi. Through the trees they come yet again. Pizarro swings to the right, Chiodi getting closer and closer. Chiodi's pit crew telling him exactly where he is and what he's got to do. He had very, very professional management. Federici there on the home corner. He's had himself a good break, but look at Jamie Dobb. Jamie Dobb passes the pass there and he's got a job of work to do. But the way I see it is that Chiodi has gone to the front. Puga has gone missing for the moment. So Chiodi is number one on the leaderboard at the moment. They'll pick up and see what they do. Jamie Drop getting better and better. What a great day. And he can finish up on the podium. He's now got a well under control. And Jorgensen, he's having a very, very strong ride. Jorgensen moving up through the pack slowly. 
Right down in the valley, we can pick up on Puzar. Puzar coming through slowly, put his hand in the air, allows Federici to go through. So we know that Puzar has definitely got a problem of sorts. Federici has now got ahead of him. But of course, the man is calm his way through. And he goes, yes, again. All the advice in the world, he knows what to do. Federici now back on the gas. Starting to chase again, but Gioni is well away. That's the checker flag, puts it on the back wheel. Italian victory, Yamaha victory. A great ride for Gioni. So, overall, it's going to be Gioni to take the win, who's on the second, Federici to third. But what a great ride for Britain's Jamie Dobb. No time to explain what happened in the first heat, back to the second heat. Whole shot yet again. Who's it going to be? Certainly boxed him in, in the first race. Where's the pass? Where? Where's the draw? Where's Federici? Well, I did exactly where Pizarro is. He's right in the front of the pack. So Pizarro has run to the front very, very quickly. But this time he's got Bellamenti up there with him as well. He's got all the front riders. But at the moment it's Pizarro. Then it's Fiori. Then it's Fiori. Then it's the youngster from the UK. That's Jamie Dom on the Suzuki. But it was a completely different race to heat number one. They've got all sorts of work to do. Number 21, that's Palma on the Canfany Honda. He really is riding his heart out this year under the guidance of Dave Thorpe. Only a young rider. He's got a lot of pressure riding on his shoulders. Fox Hill's not too far away. But at the moment, Jason Dobbs flying the flag for Suzuki and doing a very creditable job. Jorgensen's in there as well. That's his teammate. That's Palma, the Canfany rider. Back to the race leader, Alessandro Fusar. Can he do anything wrong today? Started off well. He's got Chioli now chasing him very, very hard. Then Vial looking much, much better. Vial was the rider quite capable of winning the championship. Still in fourth place is Jamie Dobb. Back to Alessandro Fusar. Putting a foot wrong. Riding very, very smoothly indeed. They know it's a long, long season. They've got a lot of work to do. Vial is on form. Goes very, very quickly. But he's had a couple of off days already. And Jamie Dobb must know. If he can move up a position, he can be on that podium. And that certainly will get his confidence very, very, very high indeed. Number 11, teammate of this man, Coleman. The audience is just ahead of him at the present time. Coleman, prepared to mix with the best, 18 years of age, riding in GPs. That's a very, very big order. But now we put them up front. Puzar and Chio together. Puzar on the TM. Chiodi on the Yamaha. Some very, very fancy equipment here. Very, very well prepared riders. That's the all on the gas. Certainly at this point, he's looking very, very promising indeed. Number 25, that's the Husqvarna of Federici. On a good day, he'll certainly pick it with the best. Then we can see Bella Mitchell in there as well. The Pasquia, who started off so well on the Kawasaki in the first heat today. He's fallen all the way back, and the flags come out. All the supporters give all the advice if you've got to ride that animal. And Pizarro is doing a great job at the moment. His pick will be telling him, don't relax, you've got Chiodi right behind you and closing. You've got Chiodi, that's heavy company to have behind you. Where's the Suzuki of Jamie Dobb? Where is Jamie Dobb? I see the Husqvarna. There's Jamie Dobb, who's still there, back in about sixth position at the moment. That corner again, they're back into the back market already. Pizar knows he's got to work through these. Look at the way he gets his weight right over the back mud guard. One, two, one, Chioli working through the back market as well. Mighty experienced riders, Vial on the charge, but I think he might have left it too late. Vial is being earned from by his pits, but I don't think he's got the time. He certainly put in a very, very credible race. Jamie Dobb not that far from Vial, so it shows that he's certainly on the pace. A bit more cornflakes and a bit more practicing, and he's certainly going to split the leaders up to pass Pasquia back into our frame yet again. But they can sense that the checkered flag is not that far away. Pizarro has just done everything right. 
Yours have said he wants to get up there with them, but it's not going to be. Not in this team today. Then we pick up on riders 18 and number 4. Next to come through. That's the French rider, Fulman, the youngster that rode in the American Supercross series last year and did so well. One that ball is out. And certainly Pizar must know that the checkered flag is just around the corner. He's done enough. He's been chased home by Chiodi on the Yamaha. But it looks as if Kiem are going to pick up a victory in heat number two today. The hand is up. He knows it's there. He's done enough. Up onto the backfield. The fans are delighted. The Italians have had another great day in one two, five racing. So the winner is going to be Puzar, second is going to be Kiyoti, and third man is going to be Vial. So to the podium it is for Alessandro Puzar and three very, very happy Italian riders. A great day's racing in Austria. And a farewell to Bob Moore, who wasn't able to ride, but he was able to drive away in his brand new BMW 540. And so from Austria, we go across to round five of the 250 GP series at Brew in France. And whilst the autograph session takes place, the mini riders are down to the line, and these are the 80cc riders. They are brought up to the front and look down to the line. Number one in the picture, that is the body face, the sensational young son of the GP racer, Patrick Bonnyface. They have a system in France of bringing young riders up through the field. And this is the Sebastian Tortelli of the future. Have a look at the determination when he gets onto the straight line and runs for the flag. He almost gets off to the back of the motorcycle. But what's the chicken flag? Have a look at this. Frankie de Tori, eat your heart out. That is the youngster, Steve Boniface, the sensation of France in juniors. Doing it all right. And that's the maestro himself. Sebastian Tortelli, whilst we were on the line, we spoke to Mark Eastwood. Good speed all season, Mark, but last week the result really became reality. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, in Italy, I mean, I made two good starts. It's what I needed, and, uh, you know, the results came with it. I mean, it could have been the same at a lot of the others, but I never got, got out the start, and I never really had the perfect race. But in Italy, everything worked out, and it was what I was looking for, and now I'm hoping I can continue that form, you know. And what have you set your sights on today? Well, really, you know, I mean, uh, really, I would like to get two top tens again and, like, you know, stay in the top 15 in the World Championships so I can get away to the long trips to South America. But, I mean, you know, I've, the, the main thing I've set my sights on right at this moment is just getting around that first corner in the first, you know, three or four. I mean, because if you do that, then the job's so much easier. Big crash last week in practice, Paul. Still struggling with this injury, I believe. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem at the moment. Um, I mean, it's not too bad. Once I start racing, I've got like I've taken a painkiller and that, it, and then like when the concentration takes over, it's not so bad. Uh, it's just really difficult between the sessions and in practice and whatever. It's really difficult to motivate myself to actually ride around because I don't really want to be holding onto the bar and stuff. But I'm going to just make the best, like you know, make the most of a bad situation and score as many points as I can. Thanks, Paul Cooper. No problem. Well, that's Sebastian Tortelli. He's down on the line. They're just about ready for heat number one. Who's going to get the all-important hole shot? Tortelli's bike prepared by Yonder Kruer, the JHK Kawasaki. Incredibly fast out of the gate. The wizard of tuning, Yonder Kruer. The man from Holland that has prepared so many GP bikes. But who's it going to be? Herring has gone down. Ron Her Rob Herring hits the floor and he goes down. Who's going to get the hole shot? Let's have a look and see who comes round first. We're waiting for them now. Never mind Yonder Kruert. What about Carly Presswood? He's prepared for Paul Cooper Kawasaki. Paul Cooks has got the whole shot. Everton down to third and fourth. Well, what a great start for the long legged South Africa. Paul Cooper has gone to the front with a sensational whole shot in France. For Tortelli, of course, a lot of pressure on your home Grand Prix. Carlson is up there. Look where Mark Eastwood is. That's so good to see. 
Evans is behind Eastwood, and Eastwood will want to keep it that way. There's Tom Kenny. So Tom Kenny now on the charge. He's got some work to do. Paul Cooper is in front, and that's a very, very handy place to be. If you can just get clear of the pack, it means that you can ride at your rhythm. You don't have to be pressurized. Look at the crowd at the French Grand Prix. They've all come to see one man. That's the Tortelli man. He's a sensation in France, and quite frankly, he should be. He's not up front at the moment. He's going to have to put on a big charge in front of his home crowd, and that's pressure for you. That's my crowd from the USA. Now let's have a pick up and see just exactly where everybody is. Cooper's still up front at the moment. Everett's still behind him. But it would appear that Cooper has gone missing. Yoki Carlson on the RWJ Silkeline Honda has gone to the front. Cooper has gone to second. Guess who's in third? Do we have to tell you? It's the world champion, Stefan Everts. Yet again, what a job of work he does for Honda. Then it's Bolly. Then it's Tortelli. And the crowd are starting to start waving the tricolors. They know that that's the man they've come to see. Yoki Carlson, the man that rode with Robbie Herring last year, does a great job for Colin Reed. Paul Cooper now, he's got a couple of places to pick up. He's riding with an already injured shoulder, and he's going to start to have to nurse that shoulder just a little. There's Mark Eastwood, the man that is so greatly improved. His starts have become sensational this year, and that's certainly giving him the impetus that he needs to run with the best in the world. You can hear the crowd. You don't have to be told where Sebastian is. JHK, Oxbow, Kawasaki Mountain, the little man Tortelli. He's got Eastwood now behind him. Marnie Buffett starting to turn up the wick as well. Where's our race leader? We're looking for Yoki Carlson. Mike Brown getting too much squirt. Stefan Everts has gone to the front. Everts rode last year with Yoki Carlson in the same team. This year, Everts has decided to go alone. Tortelli has won two to third. So, it's now Everts up front. Yoki Carlson in second. In third spot. At this stage is the flying little Frenchman. Tortelli's there. His teammate is not far behind him. Then it's Mark Eastwood. Well, the pit signals are thick and fast, but it's all over. It's all over. Stefan Everts has won. Heat number one, Yorkie Carlson will go to second. And incredibly close, Sebastian Tortelli. And so from the podium, back down to the gate. Justin Morris just having a look to see where he can get himself a good line. Jackie Vimon. The man that did so well in motocross for France. Manager now to Sebastian Tortelli. Last bit of advice, Stefan Everts. It's a bit of a bugger when you've got to make your own line. The world champion, number one on the HRC Honda. The crowd are ready. They want heat number two. The board is up. The board will turn. The gate will go down. Who's it going to be? They come screaming towards us. It's extremely difficult to tell. It's, not, it's certainly not Everts. It looked like Brown going, oh, Marty Buffett has gone down. The Suzuki has gone down on the outside of the first turn. Now we're going to have to wait and see if our camera can pick up who got the whole shot. There it is. That's what they've all come to see. Number 24, Kawasaki Mounted, Sebastian Tortelli, 125 reigning world champion. Britain's hope, Mark Eastwood, having a great ride in second place. Stefan Evans, the reigning 250 world champion on the Honda, in the third spot. Then we'll have a look. It looks as if there's a KTM up in the fourth already. We wait until they come over the hill. It's Tortelli. The French are certainly now up and ready for this lot. That's what they want. Mark Eastwood, it's great to see him riding in this sort of style. When you've got the world champion behind you, that will certainly give you the adrenaline to keep the cable wide, wide open. But they are charging all the way through the field. Eastwood is going to have unbelievable pressure. He'll be fast to come in with the ride. And then the KTM of Kipworth. Nice to see the KTM challenging the four dominant Japanese. Then number 75, that's my crown. The ride has so well at both here at the beginning of the season. He has been certainly put in a couple of very, very good rides indeed. The crowd urging him on. They want Tortelli. They want this youngster to win so badly. 
He wants to be on the podium for them. But a lot of pressure to get to a home Grand Prix of Paul Maiden about that sort of pressure. He'll tell you what happens. There's the world champion. That's Evans. He's going to start putting in a charge as well. Mark Eastwood has now got a rear view with a full of Stefan Evans. The big number one plate looming. Then it's Frederick Polly. Frederick Polly's got the pressure as well. Well, we certainly got the race coming. That's going to come up to the circuit at the moment. The track has been very, very well prepared. So good race, a great crowd has turned up to see the 250 GP. Marnie Befoot's crashed on the first turn, but he's back. Sebastian Tortelli, what more can we say? Number 24, still doing it right. All the support in the world. But he knows he's going to be crucified if he makes a mistake today. Evers now, all of a sudden, has got a little bit of space. Evers is going to start putting in a charge. Evers, of course, is super, super smooth. He's been at it a long time. 24, 25 GP victories under his belt. So he certainly won't buckle under the pressure. Polly coming through. Then it's Carlson. RWJ, Silkily Honda, immaculate preparation from the Colin Reed team as always very very professional let's all cheer him on look at the waves from the crowd how do you handle this sort of pressure at 18 years of age they know that maybe he's done enough Sebastian Tortelli has taken it heat number two the Frenchman has won Evans is going to get second spot and in third position Frederick Bolly teammate to Sebastian Tortelli. So onto the podium, the hero for the day, Sebastian Tortelli. But the winner overall for the day, Stefan Everts. A very important GP to win, Stefan Everts. Yeah, it was a very important GP, uh, especially uh, for the French crowd and uh, I beat Tortelli in the overall. And uh, it feels good, you know, uh, having the number one plate and uh, be on the top. It's hopefully it can continue a few years like that. We are seeing you ride better than ever, I believe. He's getting the best out of you. You are really up for it. Well, I think it's got something to do with the last two years. Uh, winning the championship gives you a lot of confidence and also a lot of experience. And uh, I think that's, that's uh, something to do with that. It's been said many times of Mark Eastwood. With a good hole shot and a good start, he can run with the top five in the world, and so it was today. All right, Bolly sto stole the podium place from you, but a cracking day nevertheless. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I couldn't ask for uh, anything better. It's my best ever GP finish. Uh, both motos, fourth and fifth. I mean, you know, just, you know, now I've just got to keep doing it. You know, there's no reason why I can't. If I can keep getting out and start, then uh, there's no reason why I can't keep doing it. So we'll just have to wait and see. And you don't look uncomfortable there. I mean, you know, some would say sometimes riders look uncomfortable, look on the ragged edge, but you're not on that edge. And you, for 40 minutes, there was only a few hundred yards between you and Tortelli and Everts. Yeah, that's right. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, Tortelli pulled out a gap and, um, you know, and, and so did Stefan on me. But then for, I'd say, about 25 minutes of the race, I mean, all three of us sat more or less the same and Bolle was the same as well. And... You know, I, I mean, I don't know how hard Tortelli was trying, where he was just trying to keep his same gap with Stefan and whether Stefan was thinking, I've got the overall and trying to keep the same gap with me, you know. But whatever, it's still good to ride, like, for nearly 40 minutes at their sort of speed, you know. And, uh, you know, it's the first time it's ever happened. So uh, i just got to uh, keep it under control and do it again next time. Five of the 125 GB season moves to Maggiore in Italy, and that's the man that they all have to beat today, Mr. Chiodi. Down on the line, Alessandra Pizar has a look. Federici is all ready for the day, and Chiodi says, I'll go right here at the end. I'll sweep right the way round the whole start line, and I'll get through the first corner first. Well, that's his theory. The Frenchman will then might well have different ideas. Let's have a look. In fact, Chiodi is right on the inside of the corner, so can he get the whole shot from that position? It certainly gives the corner position. You can see the yellow shirt going away. I think Chiodi has done enough. Let's have a look. Now, Chiodi is there. Chiodi is with him. 
Oh, there's a mixture of riders. Cavalito is up there as well. Paul Nunn, a fair way back already. But there's a lot of work to do. Where's number 72? There's Jamie Dog on the Suzuki. Who else is missing? Oh, the all is another good dog for a dog. The all is a long way down the pack. But let's have a look who's up front. Well, flying as always, number 25, Federici of Novakvarna. He's a wonderful job of work to do for the track race to go. He's gone for a second. Then up here at 18. Those are the two riders behind him, but the Husqvarna looking better and better. Federici certainly does. He's a very, very strong rider on this machine. Cesar and Chiodi. goes down, very, very consistent rider. But certainly, he has got the ledge at the moment. He's up front. He can ride in his rhythm. He can set the pace. But with Chiari charging, you just never know what to expect. Very, very professional team. Management, pit crew, supporters. They'll be able to tell him exactly where he is. This is Grand Prix stuff. No messing around here. They are the best in the world. Chiavi and Puzar, they are going to be tight right through the season, I'm sure. The 125 racing has just got better and better. They talk about the 250s as the premier class, but the 125 is so close and just a small mistake, and the whole championship can shift in another direction. So, Chiodi and Puzar, the men that have made the running, the other man to catch. Paul Nunn, he has started off with a very, very good year. Running for Cat Philly, under the watchful eye of ex-world champion David Thorpe. Now Fial starting to work his way through the field, but he's left it very, very late again. Normally, the trio of the Italians can just go away from the rest of them. But Fial starts to be letting him down. He's been getting boxed in regularly, and that's not good enough in a GP. The points are so valuable that at the end of the season... 12 or 13 events, a couple of points, that's what they let you down. So you've got to bank them every single weekend. And banking the points yet again today on the Yamaha. He certainly does a wonderful job for them on the Ronaldo machine. That's Chiodi, number 121. But the man with a checkered flag is Federici on the Husqvarna. And certainly an elated pit crew. Nice to see Husky with a checkered flag yet again. Chiodi comes through, he's done a great job of work, as has Pizar. So, a quick well done to Federici, pat on the back of the helmet, get your bike and back to the line. We know that the right-hand side of your screen is the quicker line in the first corner. Who's going to get there? Has Pizar in there? He's there. 83. <laughs> Chiodi's up there as well, but he's not in front. He's not in front, number five. With that passion, he's starting to work his way through. So a completely different start to start. He's got to do it all over again. He certainly had a sensational first beat. There he is, but he's not in front. So Federici. Oh! What has he done? Into the cheap seats goes Federici. Throws it down the mountainside. Tries to remount, and let's have a look at Federici, the disco dancer, in slow motion. And so, back to the front, Kuzar will do what he knows best. He's been chased by still. Then number 63, that's the man, Beta Manair from the USA. Puzar knows that he's got plenty of pressure now. Chiodi and Puzar. Nine Camalengo. Second That's Brian Jorgensen. And so the Italian fans know that it can be another 1-2-5 Italian victory.
for either Kuzar or Riccioli. That's Massio, but up front it's still Alessandro Cusar, keeping it all together. He now by his pit signals and he's all You know he's got the hard charge of behind him. The fans coming right into the circuit to give their instructions. Anyway, the spectator. 40 minutes of race time, a lot of racing under Grand Prix circumstances. A lot of pressure, a lot of preparation, a lot of training. These riders are out on the road early every single day doing the legwork. Another checkered flag, he's done enough. Puzar takes the checkered flag. Chioni will take second. And so to the podium they will go. Number 20, that's Bodolini, and he's got himself onto the podium and into fourth spot, Beta Manair. So we pack our bags once again and move to round six of the 250 motocross GP, this time to Lequet in the Czech Republic. We have a look at the riders coming down to the line. First to have a look, Mark Eastwood, the man that's getting his starts better and better. Robbie Herring, on a good day anything can happen, and the king. Two kings, 125 and 250 world champions together, they don't say a word. They just grimace at each other. Frederick Bolly, teammate to Sebastian Tortelli. He says that start line is good enough to me. And Tortelli comes down to the gate on the JHK Oxbow Kawasaki. The race face for Mark Eastwood. Tremendously improved rider. He can get his start right and keep on saying it. When he gets out of the gate, they ain't going to see him for a couple of laps. So, I'm down the who's it going to be? Line. Look at this from the top. Look at the speed of the tennis machine. He goes through first. It looked to me like Eastwood. We had an aerial shot there. It looked to me like number 22. What did the second spot to soon pick up? Certainly, Gortelli has gone to the front very, very quickly. At Lopet, Czech Republic. Gortelli is over first. Number 24, Oxbow Kawasaki. J8 Stefan Evans is not too far from the front, but at the moment, Sebastian Tortelli reasonably well under control. Mike Brown in the second spot by the looks of things. Then it's Stefan Evans, then it's Martin Griffiths. But back to the front, it's the flying Kawasaki of one to five world champion, the little man from France. Morning, of course, he needs to get his act together as well. He's quite capable of running with the best in the world. He's just got to slot them in. Mike Brown from Tennessee. Befoots and Everts, those two are always together. Wherever Everts goes, Befoots goes with him. They had a real run in for the whole of 1996, and Everts came out the king, and he needs the world champion for 1996 yet again. So, Marnie from Austin, Johnson Suzuki. A very, very strong rider indeed. But this is a man that got you at today at lock in. Mike Brown, God's on the seat as well, but a wooden boat here. 
not always super consistent <laughs> without somebody else getting out of sight. You don't see Stefan very, very often getting out of sight. Frederick Bonnie Eagle got it together. Mark Eastwood now. A great start again from him. I think as the season progresses, we're going to see more and more of Mark Eastwood. His stars have certainly improved. He can run the best. He's proved that. We saw it in the top five finish, and that's great to see. The Swiss riders are right there. Good to see the Belgium by Nick Griffiths. Up and over the table top they go. Track very, very well prepared indeed. A lot of work and a lot of preparation go into the Grand Prix circuits around the world. Mike Brown has now got Stefan Everts behind him, and directly behind Everts is, of course, the flying Mike Griffiths. Frederick Bonny, teammate on the Kawasaki, teammate with Sebastian Stortelli, there is Mark Eastwood. It really is so good to see that man going well. Yoki Carlson, number nine, on the column B, RWJ Silkeline, immaculately prepared. Honda, one of the most professional teams in the Grand Prix series. Bonny is the hard class master, he's an excellent team together. Preparation counts for anything. You don't get much better than RWJ. Excellent for the sport. It lifts the whole sport into another arena. Stefan Evans is now ahead of Mike Brown. Martin for foot speeds to get past Mike Brown as well. Martin for foot can't afford to let Stefan Evans get too far away. But he'll need to get past him very, very quickly. What happens in a race like this is you get into a bit of a mesmerized situation. You play for them, my leader, but you really don't want to do it much more than half of that. Otherwise, you just become complacent and you start to follow the same race by the guy in front of him. But there's no, no guy in front of this man, so he can race at his own pace. The best of the steady. will be quick to get him in the air. Could he run at the same level as Stephen Evans? But he certainly can. He may not have the consistency of Stephen Evans. He's got a young head, but he certainly has the turn of speed. Whether he can pull it off in year one, I don't know. Oh, oh, Mike Brown prepared to bang bog with Ronnie Befoot's well. Two strong riders there together. Tennessee versus Belgium. Two of them side by side. That's the man who gets a punch on the ball. He's been battling to get two heats struck together. He can certainly do one at a time. Everts now, and Bavut starting to get much, much closer. So Everts knows how much race time he's got there. He will be told exactly where Tortelli is. Tortelli has made a mistake. Everts has gone to the front. Well, they call him the king. He really is so super cool. Never gets flustered, never gets rattled, never rides over his head. But all of a sudden, a bit further down the pack, Eastwood. No, 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 it's not Eastwood. It's Mike Brown. It's Mike Brown and Bolly by the look of the two of them having himself a bit of a run. So, Everts has gone to the front. Marty Befoot's the man that chased him around here for the whole of 1996. Everts number one. Marty Befoot, Johnson Suzuki, number two. They are first and second at the moment. Who's going to come over the hill into third place? Well, Frederick Bolly, teammate two Tortelli. So it's another car sunny. Then it's Mike Brown. Then it's Sebastian Tortelli. So Tortelli made a mistake. Rattled his cage. Now he's going to get past Mike Brown all over the game. Stephen Evans takes the checkered flag. In the second spot will go Monique Befoot. To see who comes through into third. That's Frederick Bolly. So a great ride to him. And then I'm sure Tortelli will get fourth position. Well, a great win for Stefan Everts. That's what racing is all about. Tortelli made a small mistake. Everts capitalized on that and Tortelli back to the line to have a look at the gate prior to the commencement of heat number two. Tortelli first man down to the line alongside him. Reigning world champion on his right is Stefan Everts. To his left is the 
Josh is going to get money. The board is up. Everybody is ready. The bank will go down. And the going to be the receiver of the aerial shot. But what colour is the bike? That's the first thing. Looks like Tortelli's shirt. It looks like a shirt, short belly, but you can never tell. No, it's not. It's Mike Brown. Also with a black shirt. Mike Brown. And then, but for me, also with a belly. A long way down in the pack. So Mike Brown, the Tennessee rider, goes to the front. They're putting water down. Stephen Evans is in the second spot. The Meridian is putting water down. Dustin is coming through. And then, let's have a look and see if... Evans can get to the front, he has, Evans has gone to the front, they just call him super cool, he just never rides a big again, but he has gone to the front very, very quickly indeed, now to pick up race number two, not going to be as easy as it was in race number one, or he's number one of the day, so we just have to see, but I'm quite sure, Portelli has left himself a lot of work to do in heat number two, but Stefan Evans is well clear, Mike Brown, it appears, has gone to second, Pick up on race numbers for third, fourth, and fifth. We can see at this day on ground number plate. That's Marty for foot. You can see from the shirt. They're looking for that. So Marty for foot is up in the top five or six. Whoa, ho, ho. just hang on to him. But a rodeo riding there. Hang on. You got to do the leopard crawl. Get off the track mighty, mighty quickly. Because even your teammates with the T bone you. He said, No, I've had enough. This is not the way to go. Number one, Stephen Evans. He's got it all well under control. Mike Brown is in the second at the moment. Then it looks to me like number seven has moved up to third spot. As you can't see, Yoki Carlson is there. Carlson is the foot. Behind them. So Polly is still there. Kelly is behind his teammate. They've got Mark Eastwood sandwiched in between the two Kawasaki's. Well, what has happened to Eve De Maria? Not looking like a happy chap. He's had a couple of mechanical failures so far this season and certainly not looking happy with bike number four. Meanwhile, the race progresses. Bike number seven, well, that's nice to see Pit Byron back on the pace as well. Riding with an injury and protecting a badly damaged thumb. Very, very popular German rider, and as we say that, is that Mike Brown? Indeed it is. Mike Brown goes down. Well, he certainly has put in some charges this year. Mr. Super Stephen Evans, the Belgian rider, the fire from Germany. He's got a super cross in Europe and the crowd will turn up and today Evans feeds from the fire up. He's a very popular German rider. And then Mike Brown, number 75, keeping the gate open. And he certainly don't need the gate open for Sebastian Tortelli. He'll need to close him out in every single corner. Or Tortelli will go through like a drain. Stephen Everts just seldom puts a foot wrong. Number 7, Pitbyra, is now closed on him. On the foot now. Knowing that the race time is running away from him, he's got to get onto the pace very, really, very really quickly. And Tortelli having a look at the back of Mike Brown. Tortelli will want to get past him. Tortelli looks inside. Brown says, You ain't coming through here, bud. So Tortelli have to look again. Meanwhile, up front is all about the king, Stephen Evans, world super motocross champion, hoping to beat his father's Paddy in 24. Grand Prix victories. Byron doing everything right. He's got Marty for foot now starting to chase him. Yoki Carlson. Where is Mike Brown? There's Mike Brown. Where is Tortelli? Tortelli, has he had a lie down? Where is Sebastian? There he is. He's obviously made a mistake. Looks behind him to two teammates together. So that's Bolly and Tortelli together. Tortelli has certainly got a problem. Well, Everts hasn't got a problem, except he has to accept another trophy, another victory. The foot, I think, is going to get second, and third place will go to, where is he? Number seven, that's good, Pitbyra. Who's behind Pitbyra? Yorkie Carlson's there, then it's Mike Brown, and then, without a front brace, number 24, Sebastian Tortelli. And so to the podium, once again, another day, another victory for Stefan Everts.